All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, I'm gonna to show you one of the best uses for Raspberry Pi, and that's actually to turn it into a Steam Link, which essentially allows you to play almost any Steam game you've got on your Mac or Windows PC on your TV using a Raspberry Pi and streaming it over the network to a very low latency connection that you can basically turn into that Xbox experience where it's just on the television without having to go out and buy an Xbox and play all these different PC games. It is a really cool setup because it's so cheap and it gives you really great quality when streaming to the television. And I think this is an awesome use for the Raspberry Pi. And so in this video, we're gonna be going over the full tutorial on how to set up Steam Link on a Raspberry Pi and hook up an Xbox controller to it and start playing. First off, if you do not have a wired connection to both your computer and to your Raspberry Pi, I would not recommend setting this up. Wired Ethernet is just going to make the experience so much better. Wireless will work, but the thing is, it will drop frames randomly and random things will just happen. It'll work, but you're not gonna have a great experience and I would not really recommend it. If you really want to, you can, but in my experience, it was hard to get a good enough of a connection where it was really enjoyable. Another thing is, trying to set up the Bluetooth on an Xbox controller has been incredibly difficult. And so for this tutorial, we're gonna be going over how to set up with a wired controller. And this should work for most controllers, you just have to find the right drivers. And then in another tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use that Xbox wireless adapter hooked up to the Raspberry Pi, because it gives a much better experience if you want that wireless connection. And in my experience, I was unable to get Bluetooth to work, even though it's supposed to be compatible. I tried multiple different controllers, a whole bunch of stuff. I spent hours on guides trying to get it done, but it was a pain. So go ahead and subscribe if you're interested in hooking up the Xbox wireless adapter to this, because it is not as easy as plug and play like it is on Windows. But for the most part, if you're just using a wired controller, it'll work pretty darn well without any problems. And so also I would recommend using at least a Raspberry Pi or Pi 400, because it's got the better network connectivity, faster, and it's going to give you a better experience overall. I think it is compatible with a few older generations, but I would just go for the Pi or the Pi 400 if you've already got one. One thing that does kind of suck is the Raspberry Pi 4 and the 400. Use those micro HDMI cables or the nano, I don't know, there's like seven types of HDMI interfaces. And so you have to have that and it's really small and you're worried about breaking it. But I'll go ahead and leave Amazon links to all those things that you need to set this up in the description below. All right, and so to go ahead and get started, we're first going to install Raspberry Pi OS on an external device. For me, I'm actually gonna be using an external hard drive because, well, they're a lot faster and just a lot easier to use for me. And I'll leave a tutorial on how to set up your Raspberry Pi 4 to boot from an external hard drive, which makes it so much faster and it's just a lot easier and more resilient than those micro SD cards, which drive me crazy. All right, so to do that, it's pretty much the same on a Mac and a Windows PC, but you're gonna go ahead and need to download the Raspberry Pi imager and just open it up. And there's also an update in the work for this, which is gonna make this a lot easier, but you're gonna choose your operating system. You're going to want the desktop version of Raspberry Pi OS and choose the SD card. In this case, it's this external hard drive and just click right. One thing to note, you are going to need the desktop Raspberry Pi OS. You cannot do this with the serverless version due to the fact that, well, it doesn't have a display output, so you wouldn't be able to see anything on the screen. All right, and so now that has finally gone ahead and installed, so we can just go ahead and plug this into our Raspberry Pi, and I'm gonna go ahead and boot it up now. All right, and so now we're in the Raspberry Pi desktop. So we're just gonna go ahead and go through the first time setup. All right, and obviously set up a first time password. All right, and so now we're just gonna go ahead and do some things from terminal. So we're just gonna go ahead and open up terminal right here. And we'll go ahead and now I'll see if I can increase this. So first we're going to go ahead and install Steam. Well, first we'll do a run. We'll run a sudo apt update to update our package links. And then we'll go ahead and run a sudo apt install Steam link. and it is so easy to go ahead and run. So now we're also gonna to wanna to set up Xbox driver if you're looking to use an Xbox controller like this one with a sudo apt install Xbox driver. 
and it is just so easy to go ahead and run this. So let's start the first time. Let's go ahead and just open up Steam Link by typing Steam Link. The first time it'll go through and say, hey, you've got to do all these different things. It'll take a minute. And so it'll pop over here. It's going to install some additional packages. We'll have to say yes. And finally return to continue. And then it might do it a couple of times. This is just the very first time the thing runs. And so we've got to do that. All right, and now we're opening up Steam Link. So now what you're going to want to go ahead and do is click get started and go ahead and plug in your Xbox controller just like that. And the nice thing is they automatically connect. So just like that, we can see right here, I'm using my Xbox controller to control all of this. So we're going to use Will's computer, Will's desktop. And now Steam is opened up over here. I'm not screen sharing, so you can't see it. But basically just go ahead and type in this pin on your desktop. And if you didn't get it, try opening Steam. That probably is the issue. All right, and so now it's just that easy. We can just go through, choose a game, and pretty much just play it. I'm just going to show you that it works here. It'll take two seconds. And then we'll exit out of Steam Link, and we'll show you how to get it set up automatically. And it's got some controls, so you can go back and do some things. You can access Steam by hitting Home. It's pretty straightforward, and the tutorials are pretty good. You can also use the keyboard and mouse to actually control the screen. And we'll just go ahead and start up a game really quickly. I'm basically a streamer. And so this is all being able to be broadcast to your television, and you can just use an Xbox controller to run through everything. And it works really well, actually. I am really impressed by it. And if you look, it's actually all just being broadcast from your computer into the screen. And so it is really just that easy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and quit out of this. And we'll just go ahead and quit Steam Link on here. And that way we'll go back to our desktop. And now we'll be able to configure a couple of things. All right, so I just pressed escape. So now that's great, but we don't want to have to click Steam Link every single time we want to boot this thing up. And so we don't have to go ahead and click on Steam Link every single time. Realistically, what would be great is every time the Pi turns on, it just automatically boots it up. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and set up in Terminal. Get it big for y'all again. We're just going to do sudo nano. So basically this is just going to have the stuff that starts automatically at boot. And we're going to go to the very bottom panel here and say at Steam Link. And it's just that easy. Control X to exit, Y to save it, Enter to write it. And so now Steam will automatically open up at boot. However, there is one issue. If Steam Link doesn't have a network connection, it fails. And so to get around that, we're going to tell our Raspberry Pi to wait for a network connection before booting up with a sudo raspi-config. And we'll go into system options, network at boot, and yes, wait for a network at boot to be enabled. All right, so now that should be good. And so now let's just go ahead and test it out. So we'll do a sudo reboot. And so hopefully what should happen is we should automatically have everything just start up and have no issues whatsoever. So you can see it's actually going to take a little bit longer to boot up than usual, but that's normal because it is waiting for the network connection before booting up. Generally what it does is it kind of boots everything in parallel and generally network connections would be the last to start. And so things like SMB servers that automatically start a connection all the time are better to be run like that. We just boot up and boom, Steam Link just opened. We're already connected to our desktop, our Xbox controller automatically connected. So now we can just click, okay, A. Eh? And it's connected. And so now we're in Steam Link and we're going to be able to do whatever we would like here and set everything up. And it's honestly really low latency, has a ton of options and just works really well. I've been having a ton of fun with this, getting back into PC gaming that I've not got into in a long time, especially playing Portal. Great game. And it actually works pretty well on this. It's not designed for controller, but it will work. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. I'm definitely gonna to have to do a tutorial on how to set up the Xbox wireless adapter with a Raspberry Pi, but until then, have a good one. Bye.